We understand that berries have powerful effects when it comes down to metabolic health. We see that in the scientific literature. Generally speaking, that's coming from what are called tannins, which kind of slow down carbohydrate absorption. A lot of times, berries are very rich in fiber, which slows down carbohydrate absorption, but that's not where it ends, okay? Because if you're potentially insulin resistant, then just slowing down the glucose response to a given food isn't where it ends. There's another side to that, right? There's the digestion side where we're absorbing and we're having glucose go into the bloodstream, but then there's the entirely just opposite end of this where we need the cell to get better at using glucose. So a lot of times we treat this issue or we talk about this issue with absorbing glucose slower like it's gonna solve all the problems and it does help a lot, but we also need to communicate with the cell on the other end. That's where dark berries really come into play. So let's talk about this and how much you should consume to get a metabolic benefit. After today's video, there is a 30% off discount link for Thrive Market. So no matter what diet type you're doing, 30% off your entire grocery order. Okay, it doesn't matter who you are right now, it's good to save a little bit of money. And right now, going to the grocery store, it's expensive. Driving to the grocery store is expensive. And Thrive Market, better yet, is not only good prices, but they also have a heck of a lot more than most grocery stores are gonna have if you're trying to live a healthy lifestyle. So that link is down below. You'll save 30% off, plus you get a free gift when you do use that link. So a $50 free gift just by using that special Thomas DeLauer link down below in the first line of the description. So we have to take a look at a very big study, such a big study that it's really hard to poke holes in this sort of observational data. It was published in the European Journal of Clinical Nutrition. It took a look at three studies that were totaling about 200,000 people that consumed high amounts of dark berries, so rich in what are called anthocyanins. We'll talk about that in a second. And then it took a look at five studies totaling about 194,000 people that just consumed a lot of berries in general. Okay, and what they found is that people that consumed more of the dark colored berries had about a 15% less chance of developing type 2 diabetes. Then I took a look at people that just consumed a large amount of berries. The more berries in general people consumed led to about an 18% less risk of developing type 2 diabetes. So basically what we have is this data that says berries in general could potentially help insulin resistance and maybe type 2 diabetes, but dark berries offer an additional benefit. Now when I'm talking dark berries, I'm talking things like blueberries, blackberries, literal dark berries, boysenberries, mulberries, things like that, okay? Usually a lower sugar content too. Like blueberries are very low sugar content, especially if you get wild blueberries, the little ones, because a lot of the newer ones that are big and giant and the size of a peach, well, those are generally genetically modified to be sweeter and yeah, we definitely don't wanna go down that rabbit hole too much, okay? So what's interesting is they found that about seven and a half grams of anthocyanins daily equated to a 5% reduction in type two diabetes risk. So the more anthocyanins, the less your risk. Berries in general, 17-ish grams of berries per day led to about a potential 5% reduction in diabetes risk. So we're talking just like 17 grams of berries per day having a huge impact. That's not many berries at all. But if you go more like 100 grams of berries and you go for the darker berries, even more beneficial. But I'm just some dude on the internet. So let's break down mechanisms so you know I'm not just like spitting stuff out of my mouth. I like understanding how the body works. Okay, the first thing that we have to look at, we understand berries have fiber. Yes, okay, all that. Yes, we talked about that. But what's interesting is these anthocyanins, these flavonoids, that's what's really doing the unique thing with dark berries. For one, they do impact how we absorb glucose directly. Okay, they seem to have what are called alpha glucosidase and maltase inhibitors. So just like other berries, they slow the breakdown of carbohydrates, so it slowly drips the carbohydrates into our system. That's good because it allows our poor insulin resistant bodies a chance to deal with the stuff, okay? But then there's rodent model studies that are diving deeper and finding that anthocyanins, this, again, this flavonoid, directly impacts the cell itself by improving what is called GLUT4 membrane localization, meaning the membrane of a cell is able to allow the glucose net to capture glucose at the right point, the right place at the right time. It's one thing to have GLUT4 translocation to the membrane of a cell. It's another thing to improve the localization where it's actually happening more efficiently. So what's happening with berries is we slow down carb absorption. What's happening with dark berries is we slow down carb absorption 
and improve the potential cellular receiving of that glucose by improving GLUT4 translocation and memory localization. Now, again, that's a rodent model study, so we can't say with absolute certainty. But the other piece is very interesting, is that in redox biology, there is a paper that demonstrated that darker colored berries seem to be more powerful at modulating inflammation. When you modulate this inflammatory response, you improve insulin signaling, less static electricity and static and stuff getting in the way of insulin signaling the cell. So what's the takeaway from here? If you're choosing berries, raspberries are great but there's so much additional benefit we might be getting from darker colored berries. So if you had to choose, maybe darker colored berries are the way to go. Mulberries are 88% water, so the glycemic load is pretty darn low, even though they're moderately high glycemic. Then you have things like blackberries, which are hard to get if they're not in season. We got boysenberries, but the hard part with boysenberries is a lot of them are canned. It's hard to find them fresh, but they also are one of the highest fiber berries out there. So boysenberries and mulberries are probably the best possible ones you can eat, but they're a little harder to get. Then you have blueberries and you have blackberries. Blueberries you can get almost year round. Blackberries you can get almost year round if you get them frozen. So my recommendation is to get them frozen and get them in the wild form and have about three quarters of a cup a day. Ideally having it in the morning if you are like doing it post-workout or have them in the evening if you feel like the carbs calm you down and maybe help you sleep in a small amount like that. As always, I'll see you tomorrow.